Hi class, I want to make a video to show you how to do the Arrhenius plot for our experiment from this past week. I've already entered in for the 10 degrees, and if yours wasn't exactly 10 degrees, it's whatever temperature around 10 that you had, the time in seconds, and the mass in grams. So the next thing that I need to do is calculate the cube root of the mass. And so to do that, I'm going to put an equal sign. I'm going to put open parentheses, click on the first mass, close parentheses, the caret key, which is shift six, open parentheses, and do one third, <coughs> excuse me, one third, and close parentheses. And what that does is that takes the cube root of whatever number I've selected. In this case, it's a number that's in the cell B3. So I'm going to do that for the rest of the numbers in the B column. And so I will drag that down, and it does the cube root of all those numbers. So now I'm ready to graph this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the numbers only in the A cell. Hold down Control highlight the numbers only in the cube root while holding down control release and it should have them both highlighted then I can insert a scatter graph remember XY scatter we're not doing line graphs only with the markers and I should have a nice linear plot like this okay so I'm going to add a trend line and it's a linear trend line and the equation in R squared on the chart. Uh, I'm gonna move this over to the side here. It looks really nice, great R squared value. <coughs> Excuse me, there are a few problems that I have with this because I only have one significant digit and so I need to fix that. And so the way that I'm gonna fix this is I'm gonna highlight everything that's in my equation R squared and I'm gonna right click um, and I'm going to format the data, let me think, uh, format the trend line label. For like, format the trend line label, under number I'm going to select scientific and I'm going to put it to three decimal places, okay, uh, and then I'm going to close it and now I have many more significant digits and it is this slope that I'll be using for my Arrhenius plot okay so I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to format this so I'm gonna go to layout chart title above the chart this is the cube root of mass as a function of time at 10 degrees. So I'm going to go home, sorry, insert symbol, the degree symbol, and 10 degrees Celsius. And if yours is not 10, you'll select whatever temperature you have. Okay. Um, I also need to put my axis labels and so here I have time in seconds and I need to do my vertical axis uh, not that one I don't like that one so I'm going to do this, and that is the cube root of mass, and we're not going to really worry about the units for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And so what you will need to do is you will need to note that in this case the K that goes with this temperature, and in this case it was exactly 10, is 2.778 times 10 to the negative fourth. Because the slope, which is the number in front of the x, is the opposite of k. 
So what you would do is you would do the same thing for the 20 degrees, and I've already done that for the 20 degrees, and you'll see that it is a larger value, and you would do the same thing for the 30 degrees, and I've done it for the 30 degrees, and you'll see that's an even larger value, okay? And so what you would do is you would take the three temperatures, whatever your three temperatures were, and the three K values, okay? And we're going to do an Arrhenius plot. And so what you would do is you would take the temperatures, and here are the three temperatures that we had in degrees Celsius, and here are the K values, okay? And they're positive because the slope is the negative or opposite of the K values. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. So what I need to do is first convert the temperatures into Kelvin, and so I'm going to do equal. I'm going to click on the first temperature. And I'm going to add 273.15. Okay. And I'm going to copy that down. So now I have all of the temperatures, <coughs> excuse me, converted into Kelvin. Now I need to take the inverse of the temperature. So I'm going to do equal again. I'm going to take 1 divided by the absolute temperature which is the temperature in Kelvin okay and I'm going to copy that down so I'm going to drag that down again so now I have the inverse of all the temperatures here are the K values that I've entered in okay so I've entered in my K values and I need to take the natural log of that so I'm going to do an at symbol LN open parentheses and I'm going to select the first K value and close parentheses and enter and it takes the natural log of the first value. And if I drag that down, it takes the natural log of each of the additional values. So now I'm ready to do my Arrhenius plot. And if you recall, the Arrhenius plot is the inverse temperature versus the natural log of K. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to select the values for inverse temperature, hold down control, select the values for the natural log of K, insert XY scatter and I get something that looks relatively linear which makes me happy I am going to um, add a trend line with the equation and the R squared values okay and this isn't perfect um, hopefully yours looks better than this uh, looks like one of the points was off but it has an R squared that is greater than 0.95, which is good for our class. So now I'm ready to add the labels. So I go to layout, chart title. I am just going to put um, Arrhenius plot. For this solution. Uh, jawbreaker. Okay, and I am going to put my labels. And so the x-axis, um, it represents the um, inverse temperature and that is going to be in K raised to the negative first power so that's inverse Kelvins okay and I am going to do my vertical axis you would think that I would get this right by now I've done it so many times but there you go and this is going to be the natural log of K <coughs> excuse me Okay, so what we did this for, why do we do this? What do we do this for? Um, we did this because this value, 
the slope gives us negative EA, which is the activation energy, <coughs> excuse me, over R. So if I want to figure out the activation energy, the activation energy is equal to, in this case, the opposite of that value, which is 3, 5, 8, 9, 0.5 times R, which is 8.314. Okay. So I know that the activation energy for that process is 29,843.103 joules per mole. That's the activation energy. Okay. I also can figure out what the um, the constant A is. Okay, and A is, of course, the uh, pre-exponential uh, constant, and A is simply going to be E raised to the y-intercept. So if I do at exp open parentheses and I put in the 4.4428 in this case close parentheses it gives me the value of a and so in this case a is 84.0126414 and we're um, we can look at significant figures and it should only be three of them if we really want to think about this so that uh, is how we would do the graphing for this week's experiment. Please email me if you have any questions. So I hope this was useful.